in this hour we will not speak about python for today for this hour but uh, we will start speaking about uh, the web web architecture so probably for computer engineering student this is something they that they already know probably for the other maybe it's something different but we start speaking about web architecture because we will use the web uh, in at least uh, two or three ways you will use uh, the web in at least two or three ways during this course the first way is the, the next deliverable and all the all the subsequent deliverable that is the website on uh, on github that uh, will describe your project and so on so to you provide information to, to us mainly but also to uh, everyone in the on the internet the second way is for user interaction in your project so maybe your project will have a website a web page something that the user interact with to set up preferences to log in to query a database like uh, professor corno show you uh, before or something like that and the third way is that maybe you will realize something that will not will not present uh, web pages but other type of content other type of structured content by using web technologies for example to allow your project to speak with some lamps or from some devices to get data from uh, uh, sensors Typically, most of these uh, uh, devices in the, the so-called, we can say, Internet of Things, will use a server, a web application that provides you with the information you required. So we will use the web quite a lot in this, uh, in this course. So now I will start with a, we can say, quick overview of web architecture and technologies. Then next week with Professor Corner, you start using the web, building a, a website, we can say, um, in Python with a proper framework and so you will realize some code today we will speak more uh, generally so what is the general architecture of a really basic web uh, architecture you have from one side a client and from the other side one or more server and then in between you have the internet so what is this client for example mm, yeah, mm, a little bit more yeah the browser so typically what you do is you open a browser right yeah, not this and then here you type something like well, a website please another one please <laughs> a website without login maybe that is visible without uh, logging in amazon.com Amazon. so you type something here and you see you receive some information yeah I, I'm you receive some information the web the page is structured in some way here we have this dress shop popular departments and so on. another website for example Do you live in Facebook and Amazon only? Or you do browse the web or another website? YouTube. That is not. Uh, uh, YouTube is structured, you see, differently from Amazon. There is a advertisement here. And uh, there are some videos. Maybe we can put it in English. with some section, videos, and so on. So this is our, your client. And then you ask some information through the internet. And then here you have the YouTube server that will reply with some content. The Amazon server here that will reply with other content. And if you go on the didattica.polito.it, for example, you will have cookie bar and uh, uh, other content again hmm? okay so 
client, our browser, server, Amazon server that will provide something here. So here, there is some request that go to the server, like I would like to see the Amazon website, I would like to see the YouTube website, I would like to see the Polito website, and so on. So some request that go from here to here, and then something happens here, we can say, and then our response go back here. In our case, in our example, our web page with some content here. Hmm? All of these through the internet, obviously. So the client is typically a web browser, hmm? but it may also be like in the other example I, I bring you before, a mobile application, maybe an app that uh, use some content here to show information. The, the Facebook, since you cite, the Facebook mobile app use web content because Facebook is on the web. You have a, a local application, but the content is fetched from the internet. But also a desktop application, different from our browser or other server application that require other data. So you have here a server that asks another server for information. Maybe you will have your project that will provide a, a web interface towards your user, but the server asks the weather to Yahoo, so to the Yahoo server, the weather in Turin tomorrow, or we'll ask to the, to, to make some real example, to the Philips U hub that has a server, the information about uh, the lamps that are connected to the hub. So to turn on a lamp or to turn the lamp off or to change the color to the light and so on. So we have clients, typically web browser, but they also may be something else. And then server. I will, today we will speak about web server in general, but can be of different type of servers. So for example, computer engineering students, for example, not web server, something different from web server? You, 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 you do a network uh, course, right? You can have web server and maybe DNS, yeah, something proxies, yeah, it's more a kind of server. I, I, uh, yeah, a mail server, for example. EMAP server, SM, SMTP server, all kind of server. So server could be logical or physical. A logical server is a process, an application that run on a host, on a computer, that relays information to a client upon request. What information, which request, which response depends from the client, from the server. A web server will provide you a certain type of information, typically, in a certain way. More type of information in a certain way. Uh, a SMTP server will provide other type of information in a different way, and so on. This is logical server. Then you, we have physical server. Physical server, it's a real computer, a server, physical, that hosts one or more logical server. So typically you have a physical server, one physical server that hosts several logical servers. So maybe you have a physical server that hosts a web, a web server, a SMTP, a mail server, a proxy or whatever. So different type of logical server that are hosted by a single hardware machine. So the, the question are, what type of information do client and, and server change? I told you that this information are different and depend on the type of the client and the server. And how can this information be found? And how this information are sent? So how this request and response happens? It's something that the client asks to the server one time and or not. How this, we can say, communication works and how is hosted here in the web uh, paradigm and what requests start from here. So let's start 
from here. And let's imagine for one, uh, I will show you, um, let me see if, if I found an image of, the, um, so this is, for example, yeah. This is, for example, this is the one of the Google data center. So this is, these are servers. Maybe not only web server, but servers. This is a portion of server that Google has. So when you type on uh, google.com or .it something here, this request uh, at certain point go through that server over there that are physical server that host one or more logical server. Hmm? And they are sparse in, uh, in the world. And Google has its own, if you look for, for example, Facebook, data center, Facebook has a different structure of his uh, data server, data center for in the world, and so on. So let, let's imagine for, for a moment that we are back in the 1990, in 1990. 20, 20, 30 years ago, more or less, and that we would like to realize a web page. So, with, but with today technology. So, to realize a web page, I created, I don't know why, where. Um, to realize web pages, we have a client. Yes, this is our client. We have uh, the, the browser, that is our client and we need a server. And we need to put some information in this, in this, uh, on this server so that uh, the server can provide us this information. In the web application, this information are HTML pages. Hmm? So let's try here. I set up um, a GitHub repository so that it can serve, act as a server for this lecture.html page. This lecture.html page, if I open in uh, textual mode, is empty right now. I will try to fill up with you today. So I have here, this is my, my server. I, you can say this is something similar to I uh, work on the disk, on the operating system of the server, and then the server will take this HTML file and maybe also the JPEG uh, images, image, and will provide the image uh, to my client when on a request. So, um, first of all, let me enable the, the, the publishing of this content. So, and GitHub say that, okay, your website is ready to be published at this address. That is something you type here, and these are called three letter URL. Okay, and if I click on this link, I see file not found because I have only an image and a file that is called lecture.html that is empty. But there, there is here because it's not an error. So. Let's try to fill up this lecture.html. From here. So now I'm, I'm writing directly in GitHub and then I will commit and push directly from the web interface. It is the, the, the same thing that uh, writing and um, editing on your computer and then committing and push, but it's quicker for our purpose. So here we have, I have this HTML file. So my browser asks for this file to the server and the server in some way will reply with this content and in my browser I will see this page, right? For now, yes, no, maybe, yeah, thank you. So uh, an HTML file is a structured file with some specific properties. So first of all, an HTML file must start with this notation. that you maybe not, don't see, but uh, doctype HTML. 
This told the clients and also the server that everything here after is an HTML document. Then an HTML file, how many of you doesn't know anything about HTML? Okay. So an HTML file for all the others. An HTML sta file starts with And end with uh, the page that has the access to the content of the HTML. Okay. An HTML file is always composed by these elements. Hmm? These, the first element is the HTML tag. These are called tag. Start with a tag that is HTML and end with a tag that is named the same with this slash before. Hmm? So everything here inside we'll have a starting tag in the format minor something not something really but and we'll end with the same thing here always you always have a couple of tags one that start and one that ends whatever and here you can have text you can have other tags it depends Obviously, something is not a real tag. Then, after HTML, you have yeah, you have head, start and hand tag, and body. Always. Okay, the head is. What the purpose of these two? Yeah, metadata for, but um, let's try to say um, why you cannot put metadata here. Because the body is processed after the head, and you maybe need the information that are stored here. So here goes all the information that is needed to. Uh, present uh, the page uh, to uh, the web browser, to parse the page of the web browser. So everything here is to be read before everything here. Hmm? So in the head, in the header portion of the page is more, is to be read before the real content that is the body of the page. So here in the head, for example, we can put uh, a title. Hmm? Title that is, is not the title that you see inside the page here, but it is maybe something, someone else. Uh, most of you know HTML, so this is the basic. This title is shown where? Yeah, here in the tab. This title is what you see here in every tab or in the in the in top page of the in top part of the browser here in the tab. And maybe in the head we can also we, we can leave for now a title and stop. And then we can move to the body. To the body is where the content that you want to show on your website and your page is. So everything that you see here, here is in the body. Hmm? This is the title. It is in the head, and everything here is in some way put in the body. It's the same on YouTube and the same on Polytechnic. Um, so in the body, you can have, uh, for example, um, header. of various level. For example, you can have a header of level one and a header of level two. What are these headers? Do you know HTML? So this is 101, the basis. 
What's the difference between this header one and header two? And I have other. Uh, yes. Titles. Heading one is bigger title, either two is uh, smaller, and up go down up to header six. And uh, in practice, almost no one use header from three up to six because they are smaller typically than text, the normal text in the page. So if you have a title that is smaller than the real text, uh, probably it's not really useful for you. So typically use hitting one, hitting two, maybe sometime hitting three. In rare times, reading four, but five and six is really, really, really hard to see. So you have this heading. Then, then we see how they will be printed. And then I can have also another tag that is P that stand for, that stand for, I will ask someone else. I stand for, for example, P, for point, paragraph, portion, choose, paragraph, yeah. P stand for paragraph, where you insert the paragraph of your text. So here it's the, the real text you can write. So as a good uh, computer scientist, I would say hello world. And um, okay, so maybe I can also have another of these. Uh, we can say this is a line of text. And I would like to, yeah, this is a line of text. Another line. And uh, let me write the, the, the entire sentence with a bold word. And then uh, I will write another line of this P that is, uh, for example, and this is another line, but in uh, italic. And then uh, stop here. So I write three lines, three paragraphs. And now we will see how they appear by default on a web page. The first paragraph is hello world. Then he, it's like to pressing here, return, create a new line. So in a new line, it will write, this is a line of text with a bold word. And now we will see what is. And then new line, and this is another line, but in italic, and then a new line that now it's, we can say empty. And here we can, for example, put this thing here. What is this thing here? This A. Someone else. Now we have 45 minutes, so I'm quite confident that uh, a link is A stand for anchor and typically is a link towards another page, another website at all, another page of your website or a link to another portion of your own website on the page, literally on the page. So a link has um, a text that you, sh you see in the page, like for example, Politecnico Torino, and then it has not only the text you see, but also the real address to the other uh, website, and the other website is put in these attributes. Hmm? So this tag could also have attributes written in this way, a word, a key, equals something else, typically in uh, double quotes. And here you can put uh, the uh, link, the real address that you want to. So for example, www.polito.it. Hmm? And then we close the body and so I save this. 
um, first version. Okay, so GitHub show me again the text that I just wrote. Then let's see, I don't remember the link. Uh, let's see if uh, it works. Yeah, obviously page not found because it's not written lecture.html. That is the name of my file. Okay, so this is everything that I did up to now. This is heading one. This is heading two. This is, these are paragraph, and this is the link. If I click on the link, I go on the web page that, on the, the website that I would like to. Okay, so now let's add three more things. The first one is fix this line. I write, write here, this is a line of text with a bold word. Now I would like to make this word bold, like in Word when you press the, the bold key. How do I will make this text bold with a tag and what I write here? strong B works in the same way but strong is more correct in HTML this is HTML 5 version number 5 hmm? okay because in not in HTML 5 I cannot write this in this way I need a, a schema in HTML 4 and so this will come bold, and, this, and then I would like to put this line in italic. So you can do it with uh, the EM emphasis tag, for example. So this word will become bold, and this entire line will become in italic. And now I will also add an image. I can, so. Let's put here an image. An image has a dedicated tag that is called, thanks, mg, that start and ends, obviously. But since uh, img doesn't have anything here to write here, you don't, in an image you don't write anything here, typically you use a short form, that is you put a slash at the end of the starting tag, and this is the, the beginning and the end of the tag, in one word. And here I need to put uh, where is uh, my image. So in my repository I add um, an image that is called uh, DeLorean.jpg. So I will try to show in our website this image. So to show an image, you will have, again, an, an attribute, SRC, source, and the name, the path of the image. Now it's in the same uh, um, directory, you can say, in the same space, in the same place of uh, my uh, lecture.html file, so I can write directly the name of the, if it, it was maybe in another folder, I can write here the name of the folder, and then, like you do in a, on your computer. So, let's save this again. Add uh, bold, italics, and image. So now, I have the updated version of my. And if I refresh, I should see M 
single thing, but I don't see. What I miss? Let's save this, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, GitHub takes a little bit of time to read your file and provide the, the web version, so it was a delay. So now we have my image. I, I can also check if it's the right one because I have, the, I have the, the name, so I can, it's published also the image alone without my uh, website. So if I put here the name of the image, I, I, I see the image at alone. So my image, and you see here that you have also a bold word and the italic line, okay? So, great. So, let's, let's go back to this question. What type of information do clients and web server, in our case, exchange? What we created right now, a uh, HTML file. So, what type of information exchange HTML files that our client is able to show, and in this case, an image. How can this information be found? We always do this. How can we call this information? The URL. When we type HTTP something on the web browser, we call, we can say, the information. We say we want the um, web intro page, the lecture.html page. We want the didattica.polita.it uh, website. We want the Amazon website. We call this information. We request this information. And how this information sent? Well, next step. So this is the basic of the web, then HTML is more complex than this. It's more, we can say, mm, large than this. It has more text. It has something that, uh, some, some style. Mm? Otherwise, every web page in the world will look like this. But it, we see that uh, Amazon is different. It looks like different. YouTube looks like, again, different from Amazon. And this website is, again, totally different, and if we open, for example, the MEI 2017, uh, this one, this is again different. So every page has a different style, has different uh, appearance. This is a link, is uh, blue. Um, this color is different from this, in reality, no? From this, this color is different from uh, I will got it only blue website and uh, um, polytechnic. It's different from this that is uh, black. <laughs> okay, so there are some style, graphical appearance different, and then there is some something diff more that is, for example, here we have this thing that rotating continuously here, and when I put the mouse here, it stops, so this, you can say, interaction, interactive part on the website. So we have something more than plain HTML that I wrote here, sorry, here. And you will see with Professor Corno, both of them in the next, uh, during the course, we can say. But the message is that every web page is a HTML page, and how we can discover the HTML of every page. So this is, is what, uh, what I, I write, but if I want to see the HTML of this page, I can. Yeah, or, uh, sorry, not this, not this. I can ask the browser for the source 
of the web page. So this is our web page, and as you see, is identical to what I write. It's the same. But I can also do this same thing. Yeah, maybe this. This is the HTML of the MEI 2017 web website. You, you see there is the HTML tag here, and there is the, this is a little bit more complex, obviously. The, this HTML here, the hand, the body, the hand here. Then we have other things like script, div, main, footer, and something like that. Uh, the head here that has some the title, like we, we see. There are mm, the, the links here with, HD, with this attribute that we, we, we see and we saw. And uh, there is paragraph, there is bold word here that is this ambient intelligence, this is this one, and so on. So basically, every, web every website on the web is, at the end, an HTML file. And you can see how it's composed. And the same works for YouTube. Now, YouTube is a little bit more difficult to read, but uh, you have the head at the beginning, you have a title here. Yeah. You have a title here that is YouTube, and then you have uh, the body. You have the body somewhere uh, here, and links, etc., etc., etc. So, let's go back here. So, now, how this information are sent? We have this HTML file here, in our case. We ask for them from hit here. We perform a request. In particular, we perform a HTTP request. When we type here something and press enter, we perform an HTTP request with a verb that is called get. Because we want to get everything at that address. Okay, get is one of the verb of HTTP. We will see all of them uh, in one month, more or less. But basically, uh, browser perform 80% of the time get request. When you type something here, you and press enter, you perform a get request. And the response is our HTML file that the browser is able to read and show you on screen. Hmm? The browser receive this, this content here and know how to um, show a H1 header, a EMG and so on, how to show you this information. We can see this request here If I want to see what is in this request and what is in this response, we can see here the request and the response. Yes. Um, how? Yeah, we can use browser developer tools. So, for example, Chrome is this inspect element in, in English. Open this uh, window. Now it opened here. Maybe your browser will open here in the bottom. And you see the, the web again, the, the HTML. Here, the head, the body, you can also select, for example, this is the image, so you see that is blue, sorry, only the image. You see also here, the, the, here the dimension of this image, this image in this current format, a preview here on the image, you can click on it and see in another tab the, the same information and so on, but you can also have all the request. 
So this is, I, I recorded, what I do, what I did is, this record all the network activity. So when I write something here and press enter, it send a request and it reply with something. Here we see, as expected, what is the reply. We see that there is a lecture.html that is a document that is 300 and something byte and has been uh, sent in 36 milliseconds. And then uh, in, this, in this, this occasion, and then we have the, the JPEG image that is a JPEG, it's an image, is called by the lecture because it's embedded in the lecture and it's uh, five milliseconds to get this image. And uh, I don't find, yeah. And here we can, you can also have uh, all the information about the request. You see that there is a request URL, that is the URL I, I type here, the request method that is this get, the response, the status code, that in this case is 304, not modified because I already opened this page, so the, the server does not give me another copy of the image, but it's the same, you, it, it's, it's no, it knows that uh, I already have a copy of that uh, page and it's the same, it doesn't change, so the browser, the, the server say, please read that one. And uh, uh, from where, here, that will be the proxy probably, and, uh, and this is the request, the request header, say, okay, accept, I would like to have a HTML file or maybe an exact HTML or XML or an image or um, everything with a certain quality. And I accept also compressed image, languages, accept English, Italian, and so on. So all the um, feature, we can say, of my request. The host of the request is this one, and so on. And the response has a date, that is the date of uh, today, with the, um, the time uh, in uh, UTC, an expiration date of the response, and this is the header of the response, and then uh, accept encoding, some other information of the protocol. This is the HTTP HTML protocol in action, we can say. So what happens, just to, to recap this part, what happens here, when you type here, it sends a get request through HTTP in uh, what protocol? HTTP, yes, the, the protocol behind TCP IP, and uh, the re request comes to the server, the server process the request, and comes back with a response. The response has a header, this one, and the response has a body that is, in our case, the two files, the lecture HTML and the image, the DeLorean.jpg. And this thing, obviously, works also with other websites. I can, for example, ask for everything from YouTube. So YouTube, it's a little bit more noisy. So when you ask, uh, please give me youtube.com, it will reply with uh, a document, a script, a style sheet, a font, uh, some image, uh, some HTML page, and so on. This is only the, the most, uh, we can say, the complete version, the most complicated version of our simple request with two files. And here, you see that if I click here, you have a request URL, like before, a request method that is again get, and the response header, and the request header, and so on, and so on, and so on. Like before, you have only have a lot of element here, much more than my simple website. So, what type of information clients and server exchange in the 90, like in our, we can say, uh, example, HTML and images, basically. Uh, now it exchange HTML, HTML file, multimedia file, maybe also videos, audio stream, and so on. CSS that are style sheet, uh, files for applying some style to your HTML page, JavaScript to add interaction, to your uh, web page and so on. How can this information be found with URL? URL stands from Uniform Resource Locator. 
and um, it's a causing of a URI that are uniform resource identifier. And how this information sent, which HTTP, HTTP request a response that used TCP IP for data transfer. Hmm? So if you want to get started with, with uh, HTML from for every, everything here that doesn't know, uh, after my brief, really brief introduction, you have, uh, this is a good uh, starting point, the developermozilla.org website. And uh, this is, just, just to recap, this is uh, an example URL. You, you are typically, you write a lot of URL. So we have the, um, the schema here, that in this case is HTTP. You have, um, yeah, you have a schema, you have a host name, and you have some query here that can change. And maybe in some cases you have also port. In reality, you always have a port here, but the port is not when this, when they use the standard port, you don't see the port. The standard port for HTTP request, the HTTP is 80. Okay, so writing elite.polite.it stop or youtube.com or elite.polite.it colon 80 or youtube.com colon 80 is the same thing because 80 is the standard port. And then you have the query here that can change, can vary. Here is more, we can say normal ways, some word with a slash separated by a slash, or you can have also something like this with a um, question mark and some parameter here, or with this anchor. This is the anchor element that ask for your, the, the queries, this one, the anchor element for link in your own web page. So web server, logical web server manages the HTTP protocol. So end the request and provides the responses. Like we see, we saw a web server, the YouTube web server, the Polito web server, the GitHub web server in action. We send a request and it will give us a, a response and provides always a set of file. One of them is the HTML file, typically, to the client that show you the file. A web server typically have one HTTP connection for each request. When you send a request, you start a HTTP connection, and then when you receive the response, the HTTP connection is closed. And well, it could be multi-process, multi-threaded, and so on. So this is what we saw up to now. We have a client here, the internet, the web servers here. You have the, you, you type the URL, you send the HTTP request. The web server on the file system get the HTML file, the one that we wrote, and send back the HTML file in the response to the browser that is able to show the response. Yeah, this is, for example, um, uh, an example of a get request that we already saw in the browser. So the request come from the client here to the web server here, and the response come back with the header, and then at a certain point here you have the content or your document. Yes. Now, I wrote this page by end. Let's consider YouTube. If I want to create, a, let's imagine to maintain YouTube in the same identical way I wrote my page. So there is someone that at a certain point in the day, during the day open the HTML page here and say, okay, now, these are the trending uh, videos. So it found these images on the disk and put the three images here, or maybe more than three, and then copy and paste the title here with the link, the author here with the link, the number of views. Every time a new user see the video, open the HTML and change this number by hand. So you, you know, you, you understand that this in 2017 is unfeasible. No? Yes? It is not plausible that one person 
every millisecond open the these uh, these uh, wonderful well formatted uh, html file and by hand uh, edit uh, all the videos on the home page hmm? or yeah maybe here it could happen and it doesn't happen but it could and here the same there is not one amazon person that every every morning i update this page with a popular department or facebook i don't know twitter facebook is not visible is it's not possible that one every single day a person, a person more than one person, open this page, update the uh, HTML page, and choose to put here this thing here deliberately every single moment of the day. And from Italy here, this content from another nation, a different content because they don't have uh, a Vittorio Zucconi or Catalan, for example, uh, but uh, and so on. So how this thing is possible? Uh, you, you understand it's not a person that put here this information by end. But uh, you also know that web browser show HTML files only, yeah, images and so on, but receive HTML file. But there is no one that wrote uh, by end this HTML file. So how this is possible? It's magic. First, uh, there is really someone that update this page. Option number two. We need to. There is. There is a server that manages the, the content of the page based on. Yeah, there is. Let, yeah, let's. Yes, let's call it in another way for now. There is a software program that uh, fill up the page. So instead to have a person that writes HTML, we say, dear software, to for please compose the HTML file in this way. So there is something that generate the HTML file that is provide the HTML file that is provided to the to the browser at the end. What we did here is called a static website, and it also similar to. Uh, what you are doing for your website uh, in the, for, for Monday, for the deliver on Monday. They are static website. Hmm? You maybe generate the page from markdown to HTML, but it's static. Everything else here, this is, not, this is static again, everything else here is dynamic, is generated by software application. So, Dynamic web transaction, how it works? It works in this way. There is a URL that send a request, then the web server receives this request, and there is a software here that handles the parameter, maybe here that handles some logic and generate a bunch of HTML files. These files are sent here to the response to the browser that show the page. This is, for example, what, are, what could be this parameter, for example? I told you we cannot open Facebook because Facebook, you need to be logged in. So this parameter, for example, are the username and the password, my username and password that is different for one of yours. So the, the, the application here generates different home page of Facebook, for example, or, or YouTube uh, for me or for you, or in Italy, or in the United States, or in China, or whatever. Different location, different person have different personalized page. And this is possible thanks to this dynamic web transaction. And this is uh, something that you will see uh, with Professor Corno on next week, how to create dynamic uh, web page, website in uh, Python with a framework that is called Flask. We can send here HTML there is no only HTML and uh, file. We can also send other type of structured document um, back to the user. 
that could be generated here like HTML files. Typically, applications here, application servers here, this program that generate this thing also have a database somewhere that, that for information. It took from database, the videos from YouTube, the department for Amazon, the post on Facebook and something like that. So the application server, this, is, this piece of program is a, it's content generator and generate dynamically these HTML pages. Moreover, it manages the logic, the business logic of the website, how to present information to who you are authorized to add new information, to read this information and so on. It's a middle tire, we can say, between the browser, the client, and the data that is residing on a, residing on a database, and also implement various mechanisms like the, the session and uh, something like that. Uh, so in general, the general architecture is, we can say, this one. You have this web application that it will be, in our case, is in Python, that generate the, web, the HTML file that is given to a web server that send the file to the browser and show the, the file to the, to the person. And yes, you can have a, a database here, so you can add here a database and take some of this information from the database and so on. And then things become more and more complex. Uh, I, I told you that our static website is 1990 style. If we are more we are moving on 2017 style, we add things to this graph. So maybe we add CSS, we add JavaScript. So it's different from Python or from any programming language that you, you know, you write some code and then it's, we can say, a, a limited set of uh, uh, tools to perform your operation. The web is much more complex because the web, and now I close here, the web is continuously evolving and there is this website that graphically show you the, what happens with the web. So, yes, at yeah, some point stop. We, we started here in 1991 which the HTTP protocol that continues through the years and HTML and then Moving through time, we add problems and we come up with solutions. And nothing is, we can say maybe flash is deleted, but typically nothing is removed from this, but everything is added to this. So moving, you see that things are much more complex so now you have a lot of technology, you have web audio API, web RTC, file system, you can open a webcam from your web application and something like that. You have animation in a style sheet and so on. And this thing stopped in 2012. And so in other five years, this, uh, we can say snake is much more bigger and bigger than this one. So this is a complex, we can say, world with a several technology that aims to solving problems that we had in time. Uh, and we try to solve, the, the world, try to solve this problem by adding technologies. And typically, these technology don't come back. They remain always available for providing interoperability, backward compatibility, compatibility, and something like that. So this, we can say, close the web introduction, the web architecture introduction, just to have a quick overview. Uh, if you have any question here, otherwise, thank you and having a good night.